I love to hear that. Welcome to a special edition of Gutfeld. I am Tom Shalou. Greg is out buying shoulder pads for his Randy Weingarten costume. <laughs> so, so, in a virtual campaign call, Joe Biden referred to Trump supporters as garbage. Yeah. Shocking everyone who couldn't believe Joe successfully logged on to Zoom. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger has endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris. Which comes as no surprise since he and Doug Emhoff share a love of impregnating the health. <laughs> a lot of love, a lot of love. At the World Series last night, two Yankees fans tried to pry a foul ball out of the glove of Dodgers right fielder Mookie Betts. I gotta be honest, it's nice to see New York fans try to steal something besides a wallet. <laughs> Not only were the two ejected from the game, they were sentenced to attend three Mets games. <laughs> All right. It really worked. They made the Wow, playoffs. they're from Queens. I didn't know it. Yeah. The Menendez brothers are reportedly begging to be released before Thanksgiving. Probably because all the wine and the turkey will tire the family out, making them easier to murder. <laughs> <laughs> Kamala says she hasn't done any of the things she's promising to do as president because right now she's only the vice president. She is, asked one man. <laughs> you didn't know. <laughs> After... <laughs> After three years as a couple, Channing Tatum and Zoe Kravitz have broken off their engagement. Yeah. Their reps say the split is amicable and that they both just want to spend more time with their mirrors. <laughs> South Korea is spending over $300 million to combat the country's loneliness epidemic, and they're starting by bringing in an expert. <laughs> Looked like, he almost looked ready for that one. Joe Rogan offered to interview Kamala Harris, but her team's demands were unacceptable. Namely, that he travel to meet her, he limit the podcast to under an hour, and he stop being Joe Rogan. <laughs> okay, let's do a monologue, shall we? Yeah. Okay. So, remember back a few months ago when the Kamala Harris campaign was all about joy? The joy and the excitement that we're seeing around this campaign. The joy of her laughter and her lights. We're fighting for joy. Somebody say joy. Joy, joy, joy. With faith in each other and joy in our hearts. With energy, with passion, and with joy. We need Kamala Harris, the president of joy. And let us choose joy. Wow, what a difference a few weeks makes, huh? <laughs> because now Kamala is sounding about as joyful as an episode of Naked and Afraid featuring Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> Roll it, Mike! We are not a vessel for the schemes of wannabe dictators. This is someone who is unstable, obsessed with revenge, consumed with grievance, and out for unchecked power. I am here tonight to say that is not who we are. That is not who we are. Yes, these days the only joy Kamala is inspiring is amongst Team Trump. And it's not because she's covering his shift at McDonald's. <laughs> this is what it looks like when a pantsuit comes apart at the seams. From the outset, Kamala was teed up as the DEI candidate, black, Asian, female, and disabled by chronic giggling. <laughs> she did bring us together because nobody has ever managed to turn off such a diverse mix of voters. It's no secret, men are not buying what she's selling, even black men. She's about as popular in a black barbershop as my barbershop quartet. <laughs> what? Right, guys, right? Yes, sirree, yes, sirree, yes, sirree, yes, sirree. 
Yes, sirree. She even, she even brought in Barack Obama to scold black men at an event in Pittsburgh where he noted that Kamala's weakness with male voters was most pronounced with the brothers, or brothers, as they say in Cape Cod. Part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly now, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. Mm -hmm. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. What could these other reasons be that he's talking about? Maybe the record employment increases for blacks under Trump? Maybe the fact that Kamala locked up all those black men on low-level weed charges as a California prosecutor? Or could it be that black men don't like salad? Roll tape. Well, I think culture is... It, it is a reflection of our moment and our time, right? And... and, and Present culture is the way we express how we're feeling about the moment. The significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time. Can I get a side of ranch with that? <laughs> it's almost as if blacks, Asians, and Hispanics all care more about making their lives better than being reduced to a demographic category by woke pollsters. Another reason that the left is short on joy these days is Kamala simply can't be clear about what she would do as president. I think what some voters are struggling with, and we've heard this across the state, is when you discuss your plans, they come back and ask, well, why haven't you done it already? Well, I'm not president. You're vice president. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly, but I'm going to tell you what I'm doing as president when I have the ability then to do what I know, based on my experience, is a new approach it is about building on the good work that has happened, but there's more to do. I think I speak for millions of Americans when I say, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I guess her answer is sort of the presidential version of, we have to pass the bill in order to see what's in it. And she also repeated her favorite phrase. We have auto workers who are being laid off and those who fear that they might be laid off. The average person can't afford groceries or their rent. And recent polls in Michigan show that Michigan voters believe that Donald Trump would do a better job with handling the economy and bringing jobs back. What do you say to that? Well, let's start with this. I come from the middle class. <laughs> wow. Wow. That answer fit the question about as well as one of Tyrus's jackets on Greg. <laughs> And here she is last night, roasting some more of her favorite chestnuts. 250 years ago, America was born when we wrested freedom from a petty tyrant. They didn't do that, only to see us submit to the will of another petty tyrant. Wait, yesterday Trump was Hitler, now he's King George? <laughs> you gotta get your evil dictator straight. And she ends by throwing consistency to the wind and calling for unity. And here is my pledge to you. I pledge to seek common ground and common sense solutions to make your life better. I don't believe people who disagree with me are the enemy. He wants to put them in jail. I'll give them a seat at the table. Wait, I thought they were fascists. You're gonna give fascists a seat at the table? <laughs> I think you'd do better to go full on hysterical like Nicole Wallace. Listen to her discuss the stakes of the election while fawning over Michelle Obama. Former First Lady Michelle Obama isn't messing around anymore because with women's reproductive health care and freedoms hanging in the balance next Tuesday, the stakes literally are life and death for every woman in America. It's not hyperbole, it's not an exaggeration, it's what happens next week. Yeah, that's not hyperbole. Trump will murder all women. <laughs> <laughs> so the joy appears to have been replaced with panic because the truth is Dems made a major error, not in choosing Kamala, but choosing her too soon. They should have shivved Biden much later, <laughs> say about a week before the election. Because the longer the nation gets exposed to her, the clearer it is that there's just nothing there except an empty pantsuit. And as many Dems 
traditional voters back away from her. Donald Trump rises in the polls, and all I can say is I'm starting to feel pretty joyful myself. Huh? Let me ask, what time is it, guys? Time to have some fun. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This Halloween, he's going as the Invisible Dead, actor, writer, and comedian Jamie Lisso. He won't feed his family unless they make reservations. First, uh, <laughs> chef, restaurant owner, and author of the new book, Andrew Gruel's Family Cookbook, Andrew Gruel. She wants to rid the nation of polarization. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor, Kat Tim. And doctors test his reflexes with a wrecking ball. New York Times best-selling author, comedian, former NBA World All righty. Okay, Tyrus, you know what is interesting? Uh, uh, some of the things I said in my monologue were remarkably similar to some of the things you said on The Five today. Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, pretty much plagiarize everything I said, yes. <laughs> I, know, so. I know, but Tyrus, I already That's the only thing that kept me from attacking. was like, wow, this guy's talking really black. I'm getting pissed. And I realized <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. He's talking about me. Uh, thanks for watching. Yes. Appreciate that. <laughs> Every time she speaks, I have, I have a mini stroke. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not the only one. Was the entire, we thought it was a bug problem because everyone's like, the what is she? What the f do you mean? Like, <laughs> you can't. First of all, the, the whole garbage, the name calling thing. I think we're all past that. I think. I think if there's anybody who was like, "Gee, I don't know who to vote for," garbage. Well, that just made this clear for me. <laughs> oh my gosh, a bad comedian makes a joke about everybody, but we're just going to focus on the Puerto Rican part. Well, that's all it took for me. Like. I think at this point, we just need to get this vote over with. This, this is this, this campaign. Yeah. They're, this campaign is, they're, they're selling it. This election is not close, for, and they have no one to blame but themselves. You call somebody Hitler, you normalize it, and every time you get a mic in your hand, you hurt our feelings. That's why you're losing this election. Nothing of substance comes out of her mouth, except for, let's start with this. But she never... Finishes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's start with this. Andrew, uh, I mean, what do you think they're going to call the American people next? I mean, she started with Hitler. Then you saw she went to King George. Uh, then, you know, we got the garbage thing. They're already apologizing for that. I mean, they deserve it. They spent several days going on about this MSG Nazi rally. I know. And I, MSG is going to be banned after this. Every Chinese food restaurant is going to be freaking out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's, the that's the craziness. And, you know, I, keep co I come back to two things. Number one, the fact that she starts off by saying everything. With, I, I grew up in a middle class family. That didn't matter to me, but she said it so many times. Now I'm starting to doubt that. Yeah. Like, I don't think she did. I think she grew up in a very wealthy family. And I'm going to look into this. I want to see her parents' taxes. Number two, the joy, right? Like the joy element. So there was never any joy. There was just the changing of the guards. It was like a mulligan when you go out and you play golf. You get excited about your next shot, but then you shank that one into the weeds. It's the, the, the prisoners in the asylum, and somebody tells them, okay, you have an opportunity to change the menu. Well, we don't want to eat peanut butter and jelly every day. We're going to give you something new. And they get so excited, right? But then the new, the something that they give them is nothing more than bland, tasteless, salt-free, <laughs> boring porridge, right? Well, such a... actually, I, I just described gruel. Yeah. Uh, and... And then, and then they're like, oh, shoot, but we can't, we can't act up again because, you know, now we just got to go with this. We got to pretend that we like this. She is salt-free food. It is flavorless. It is bland. It is absolutely tasteless. Bam! Such a chef. A chef. Look at Kamala. Uh, Kat, you're the only woman on the panel. What do you think? Uh, yeah. yeah, once again. Yes. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, this is, they're, obviously, they're playing up this woman thing, and I can't stand it when guys on the right are like, oh, women, uh, women shouldn't vote, uh, the, you know, the, 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 uh, you know, the women are getting us in trouble. It's like, people on the right can attract the female vote. They don't have respect for the male vote. You know, she sends Obama out to insult men. 
First of all, thank you for saying that you think it's okay that I vote. <laughs> I know. But I'm yeah. very progressive. Yes, yes, I was going to say. I was going to say. I was saying, wow, that's very, very progressive yeah. of you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm not inspired by this, right? I just, and also, okay, I want to talk about food too, right? A little bit. Yeah. Second, because sometimes when I'm ordering food, I can't decide <laughs> if I want sweet or I want salty. I can't, so I'll, so what I'll do is I'll get like the omelet with the potatoes and I'll get the waffles. I'll get both. Yes. You Great can't meal. do that so much with a speech though, <laughs> like <laughs> she did. Yeah. You can't do the, they're all fascist speech. And also we'll do the unity speech. <laughs> because it's, it, you're right. That, that was the most striking thing to me, right? Because I am somebody who's passionate about we shouldn't hate each other because of politics and this and that. But you also just, you, what do you think you did there when you said fascist? They're all fascist. By the way, I'm so convinced nobody knows what that means anymore. Yeah. No, like, no, why, yeah. why does, why is that not followed up? And by the way, what do you mean by fascist? What is it, even ask it like that, what does that mean to you when you, the way you use it? Because I think it's, it's actually not, I think people just use it to mean bad. Yeah, I mean, and that's what, no, but I don't think I remember anyone asking her that question. No. Because I'm don't. sure she'd be and, like, and a point, if you're gonna if you're gonna try to split the the waffle and the omelet, you gotta have connection, like yeah. something like having said that, or yeah. you know, speaking of tyrants, like she doesn't even do that. She okay. just goes from he's Hitler, he's gonna eat women's face off to, although anyone who votes for them is welcome at my table. Like that's. <laughs> You need, you need a maple breakfast sausage in between. You need something in there. A little bit sweet, a little bit savory. Jamie, you got to sprinkle a little, you know, a little cayenne pepper or something. You <laughs> or honestly, even a McGriddle. Mc, yes. Yeah. Oh, like, that's that's really good. Good. Yeah. That's Jamie, really good. Jamie uh, you didn't learn about joy until your marriage ended, right? Is that the way it worked out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, same for my ex, but yes. Um, Tom, let's start with this. Yes. Isn't it weird that you don't really have to say, let's start with this, you just say it, and then they go, oh, he started with that. <laughs> <laughs> the only woman that's more repetitive than Kamala Harris is that lady that goes, caution, the moving walkway has ended. <laughs> caution, <laughs> the moving walk." Whenever she did an interview, I expect, her to, I expect her to go, plus zero to talk to a live person. <laughs> and uh, Biden didn't even go to her speech. He stayed home, he, he didn't go. He said, he, he said it, it was her night, and also, none of the chairs were toilets. And um, <laughs> he also said October 29th, 2024 was past his bedtime. <laughs> My one last thing, what Obama said, I totally do not appreciate, where he said, like, you're not voting for her because she's a woman. Yeah. It reminds me of when, like, a douchebag guy hits on a girl, and she turns him down, and he goes, oh, she's a lesbian. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I it's not that she doesn't like penises. She just doesn't like your penis. <laughs> exactly. But to be clear. All right. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.